All right. We are here with Christian Lungard. You are Ray Hall Lanigan Letterman, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan racing driver. Um, unfortunately, starting back in the pack this year, can you talk about the experience of having to attend the last row party? Once again. Once, uh, hold on. Why are we not? Once again. Am I on now? Now you're on. There you go. Once yeah, again, yeah, attending one, the last once row Once again. Uh, I actually qualified 31st last year and qualified 31st this year. Okay, that's not a good streak. Mm, well, at least I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Uh, yeah. that, that's at least the positive of it. Uh, but no, obviously, with Graham driving in the 24 car, uh, we've been moved up to 30th. Still have to attend the last row party. Yeah. Which sucks. Uh, but now we got all four of us, so so Graham will, will join us for that one. Um, so that'll be fun, I think, tonight. You, um, you really dominated in the GP here earlier in the month and then struggled at the Oval. What What is the difference in the cars that would maybe cause something like that? I mean, in terms of, of my performance, I don't th- really think that I struggled uh, this, the whole month. We, we just haven't been fast. Yeah. Uh, as a team, we just haven't had the performance and the, the pace that we, we, we need and we should have. Uh, with the resources that we have available, and we're, I'd kind of say, extremely disappointed in that. Yeah. Um, of course, but right now it's a learning curve, and you know, having Stefano come in, uh, understanding the aerodynamics of the car and the vehicle dynamics, um, we we just struggle with pace, and it's it's been a tough learning curve for him as well, to be honest, yeah. because uh, you know we we've done a lot of error testing uh on and off track and and just to understand how the car which window the car needs to be in and uh, looking at the gp and even barber if you look at the performance we had last year at barber compared to this year at least on my car we were way more competitive this year so i think the car is more pleasant to drive it's nicer to drive we just need to extract more pace out of it yeah quite honestly and i think that has showed at the the oval last year i was not comfortable in the car at any part on any ovals we we did um texas this year was a little interesting but but here at the speedway i've i blasted through all my my qualifying runs and i think i did 11 in, in total with high boost and the car was nice to drive we just weren't able to go faster we were trimming we were going back on downfalls and we're just doing the same pace so so you 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 obviously grew up in europe your goal was probably f1 and you were a road racer correct had you ever done an oval before coming to IndyCar? Never. I remember my first ever oval test was at Texas right after St. <laughs> Pete last year. Which, if listeners aren't familiar, Texas is a Crazy. very difficult, uh, wild ride. So, <laughs> actually, I have a very good way of explaining this. Okay. Um, so, you will start with the European drivers that have raced at Monza. Mm-hmm. Well, no. End of straight at Monza, just turn hard left. Right. That is turn one at the speedway. Okay. But you'll still be going around 30, 35 kilometers an hour faster. Right. And then Texas has half the distance of the speedway, but it's as fast. Does it just feel like you're on so a loop? So it's pretty crazy. Loop de loop the whole time, like one of those carnival rides where you're just spinning in the spaceship? No, I mean, it is it's it's it is different compared, compared to that. Um, and it's the speedway, especially, is a place that you just can't explain to people mm-hmm. that haven't done it. Um, and I, I mean, I want people to try the two seaters. Yeah. I, I mean, I even want to experience it. Really? Yeah. Like I've, I know I've asked a few people if I can try it, not to drive it, but sit in the back. What have they said? No. <laughs> so I'm a little <laughs> how, disappointed. How does that work? How did you get turned down for the two seater? I don't know. They probably may think I've, I've had enough track time. <laughs> um, but no, it's you know for for me because I've had the first ever time I ever drove an actual car. When I was still doing go karts, right. I had my dad in the passenger seat, and I scared the shit out of him. Right, um, and he used to be a rally driver, driving on on oh. side of cliffs and and all <laughs> sorts of stuff. And I'm like, you're crazy. Um, but it, it not being in control, yeah, sucks. Like right. it is scary, and it's it's very difficult to um, kind of control yourself. Mm. And when you're in control, I mean, you're you're holding on to the steering wheel. You're not moving as much. Like, you're just right. in control. But as soon as you're the passenger, it's a different thing. So I want to experience it, especially around the oval. I know they do this, the, the two-seaters around here. So I'm, I, I don't really want to do it on a race day. I just want to try to experience it. Yeah. Like, what does it feel, uh, feel like? And I've been turned down, apparently. 
That is bizarre to me. Yeah, you'd think that you'd, you'd be able to get a ride, but maybe they're saving fuel Maybe costs. Maybe my question just haven't reached far enough. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably have to ask some different people. So you have a mustache this year. Is that an honor of Bobby Ray Hall? What is the backstory of the, your mustache? Yeah, it's, it's actually a deal I have with my best friend, and he's here this week. He got in on Tuesday, and uh, we play golf this morning, and he's having a good time. And he was actually asking me if he could follow me around for the whole media tour today. <laughs> And I was like, no, that's not a good idea. <laughs> it's like, I can just stand in the back room. I'm like, no, no, you can go down Would there. Would he be making it, faces at you behind the camera or what? Yeah, it just wouldn't end, end very, very great. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it was just going to be a long day with that. So, um, no, he's enjoying himself. He's actually never in his entire life seen me drive. Really? Never. So uh, why not start out with the Speedway for the Indy 500? Well, so, what was your first experience at the Indy 500? Was it as a driver or did you come here first before? Time, yeah, first time as a driver, which was last year. I'd experienced it on TV before, but never yeah. been here. Uh, my How did you describe it to him? Well, I'm still trying to. So I, I guess that explains the, the answer. You know, it's, it's, you just can't explain it. You have to experience it. And race day is just so different. Yeah. Like race day is is race day, um, and it and it's it's just an incredible atmosphere around the whole facility. Yeah, um, and you know, being on the on the Breakyard Golf Course this morning with with Graham's golf tournament mm -hmm. was amazing. There was a lot of people over there. We saw the suites out of turn two, which I'd actually never seen before. Mm. So it's great for me also to. I, I mean, I've seen them on track, but I've never seen the actual place before. Right. Um, I got to see some pictures from from inside from people that we were playing with that had a suite there, and it's it's just it just shows the passion for this place. Yeah, and I never grew up with that. You know, I grew up believing in Monaco, Formula mm -hmm. One, all these kind of things, and having watched the Indy 500 before doing the Monaco Grand Prix, to now having experienced it, mm -hmm. I'm like, people should just forget monaco because monaco like nowadays it's just boring because yeah. it's a very tight race it is and also it. the f1 cars are only becoming bigger and heavier and clumsier to drive and you just can't overtake yeah so when you when you finally experience this you see the atmosphere you see the amount of people that are here cheering on and it's just one huge party really like everyone's just having a good time and i've had a good time i mean last year the car wasn't enjoyable to drive but you know, seeing all the fans walking onto gri onto the grid, doing the driver intros. You know, seeing the amount of people. Rewatching my onboard, you can hear people on the stand. You, you can on, on the grandstand. You can hear people. Interesting. Some yeah. other drivers said that you couldn't hear that. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can. It depends if you're on throttle, off throttle, um, and these kind of things. But it's it's incredible. Final question: If you were uh, there, were a movie to be made about your life, what actor oh. would play you? Who would even want to play me? <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe Jude Law? No, I would probably have to, to choose a Danish uh, actor for this. Okay. Uh, Mass Mikkelsen. Okay. He's yeah. in, um, he plays in one of the James Bond movies, uh, Casino Royale. Yes. Y you know who, do you know who I'm not thinking? A, not a, so, not a clue. So he's the bad guy. Uh, the bad guy that, uh, that's on the boat. I think he has a fake eye. Uh, he's a very good actor. Uh, nice guy as well. I met him a few times. Um, just, yeah, probably him. Uh, I'll have to. I mean, I'm Dane. I'm a Dane, so I have to say Dane, really. Yeah, it's I guess so. like required, right? Yeah, it is. All right, Christian Lundgaard, driver of the number 45. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course, thank you. All right, thanks, and then we'll grab a quick photo, and then you'll be on your way.